Can I ask you a ridiculous question? Sure. <laughs> I might give a ridiculous answer. <laughs> uh, do you think, uh, well, may maybe by way of asking the question, let me first uh, mention that you're kind of critical of the idea of the Turing test as a test of intelligence. Um, let me first ask this question. Do you think we'll be able to build an AI system that humans fall in love with and it falls in love with the human? Like romantic love. Well, we've had that with humans falling in love with cars, even back in the 50s. It's a different love, right? Well, I, I yeah. think I think yeah. there's a lifelong partnership where you uh, can communicate and grow. Like, I think we're a long way from that. I think we're a long, long way. I think um, uh, Blade Runner was, you know, had the time scale totally wrong. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but. Do you, so uh, to, to me, honestly, the most difficult part is the thing that you said with the Marvex paradox is to create a human form that interacts and perceives the world. But if we just look at a voice, like the movie Her, or just like uh, an Alexa type voice, I tend to think we're not that far away. Well, for some for some people, maybe not. But I, I, I you know, I, I. You know, as humans, as we think about the future, we always try to, and this is the premise of most science fiction movies, you've got the world just as it is today and you change one thing, right? right. But that's not how, and, and it's, it's the same Good with a self-driving car. Good you point. change one thing. Yeah. No, you, you everything changes. Yes. Everything grows together. So surprisingly, I, it might be surprising to you, it might not. I think the best movie about this stuff was Bicentennial Man. Mm. Um, and what was happening there? Um, it was schmaltzy and, you know, but yeah. what was happening there? As the robot was trying to become more human, the humans were adopting the technology of the robot and changing their bodies. Yeah. So there was a convergence happening in, That's a, in a sense. I mean, so we will not be the same. You know, we're already talking about uh, genetically modifying our babies. You know, there's a there's you know, more and more stuff happening around that. We will, we will want to modify ourselves even more for all sorts of, of, of things. Um, we put uh, all sorts of technology in our bodies um, to improve it, you know. I've got I've got things in my ears so that I can sort of hear you. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. So we're always modifying our bodies. So, so, you know, I think it's hard to imagine exactly what it will be like yeah. in the future. But on the touring test side, do you think, uh, so forget about love for a second. Let, let, let's talk about just uh, like the, the Alexa prize. Actually, I was invited to be a, what is the interviewer for the Alexa prize or whatever um, that's in two days. Their idea is uh, success looks like a person wanting to talk to an AI system for a prolonged period of time, like 20 minutes. How far away are we and why is it difficult to build an AI system with which you'd want to have a uh, a beer and talk for an hour or two hours? Like, not for to check the weather or to check music, but just like to to, uh, to talk as friends. Yeah. Well, you know, we saw we saw um, Weizenbaum uh, back in the '60s with his program Eliza, yeah. um, being shocked at how much people would talk to Eliza. And I I remember, you know, in the '70s typing you know, stuff to yeah. Eliza to see what it would come back with. Um, you know, I think right now, and you know, this is a thing that um, uh, you, Amazon's been trying to improve with Alexa. There is no continuity of, 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 of topic. There's not, you can't refer to what we talked about yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, it's not the same as talking to a person where there seems to be an ongoing existence, right. which changes. Um, yeah, we share moments together and they last in our memory together. Yeah, and um, there's none of that. And there's no um, sort of intention of these systems that they have any goal in life, even if it's to be happy, you mm -hmm. know? They don't, they don't e e even have a semblance of that. Now, I'm not saying this can't be done. I'm just saying, I think this is why we don't feel that way about them. Or well, that's, a, that's a, 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 a sort of a minimal requirement. If you want the sort of interaction you're talking about. It's a minimal requirement. Whether it's going to be sufficient, I don't know. We haven't seen it yet. We don't know what it 
feels like. But. I, I tend to be, I tend to think it's, uh, it's not uh, as difficult as solving intelligence, for example. And uh, I think it's achievable in the near term. But on the Turing test, why don't you think the Turing test is a good test of intelligence? Oh, I, I, because, it, you know, again, the Turing, Turing, if you read the paper, Turing wasn't saying this is a good test. He was using it as a rhetorical device to argue um, that if you can't tell the difference between a computer and a person, you must say that the computer's thinking because you can't tell the difference, you know, then it's thinking. You can't, you can't say something different. Um, what it has become as this sort of weird game of fooling people. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> back at the uh, uh, AI lab in the late 80s, we had this thing that still goes on called the AI Olympics. And one of the events we had one year was um, the original imitation game, as Turing talked about, because he starts by saying, uh, can you tell whether it's a man or a woman? Mm -hmm. So we did that. At the, at the lab, we had, you know, you'd go and type and the thing would come back and you had to tell whether it was a man or a woman. Um, and um, the, the, uh, uh, one of the, one of the, one of the, uh, uh, one man came up with a question that he could ask, which was always a dead giveaway mm -hmm. of whether the other person was really a man or a woman. You know, mm -hmm. what he would ask them, did you have um, green plastic toy soldiers as a kid? Yeah. What do you do with them? And a woman, <laughs> a woman trying to be a man would say, oh, I lined them up. We had wars. We had battles. Yeah. And the man, just being a man, would say, I stomped on them. I burned them. <laughs> 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 so you know, that's what that's what the Turing test the Turing test with computers has yeah, become. What's the trick question? What's yeah. the, that's why I say that's right. It's that's sort right. of that's right. devolved into this weirdness. That's right. <laughs> Nevertheless, conversation not formulated as a test is a pretty is a fascinatingly challenging dance. Uh, that's it's a really hard problem to me. Co conversation when non poses a test is a is a more intuitive illustration how far away we are from solving intelligence than like computer vision. It's hard, computer vision is, is harder for me to pull apart, but with language, with conversation, you could see- Oh, because like, language is so human. We don't, it's so human. We can, we can so, we can so clearly uh, see it.